Now you already know, man, when it comes to this channel right here, k for all TV, I'm going to give you nothing but that real spill. And for a while, I've been throwing it out there and letting y'all know a lot of things that happen to inmates. We've had a couple things on here to let you know some things that happen to guards. You know what I'm saying? Correctional officers. For this video, I'm going to be letting you know how one got put to sleep for trying to extort the wrong person inside a prison down here in the state of Florida. So let's do it. I'm the best, finna be this way till I EOS Take it how you want, nigga, yeah, I'm a pro Fuck around, I bust your lot while you're at Vizzo I hate to be this way, but I live for the moment Waking up every day, show me an opponent Shanks on deck, hitting bitches with locks So much pool, I can even start you from the box You don't wanna pay rent, got me bent Got lacks on deck, your money was well spent Vultures on the prowl, so don't try testing Step two, cause violent first steps, finessing You a hold down man, suitcase this My cell phone, I'm a charger, don't walk with a limp Get it knocked off or missing, you gon' get it Next time I see you ass, you gon' lose airlifted What's up, y'all? You already know, man, k for all TV back in the building Y'all go ahead and do me that solid favor, man. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And also make sure you hit the notification bell so you can see it first. Welcome back to the channel, y'all. Today, I'm going to be talking about something that happened to a correctional officer while I was inside a prison. Now, like I said in the intro, I normally talk about things that happen to inmates because those type of things happen all the time, multiple times a day. But for this one, I'm going to be telling y'all what happened to a guard, all right? Now, let me put this out there and let you know that not all officers and not all guards, not all police on the streets are, you know, fuckboys. You know what I'm saying? There's some of them that are, you know, actually cool, you know, that do their own thing and it ain't nothing but a paycheck to them. You know what I'm saying? It'd be the ones that try to abuse that authority, the ones that go the extra mile to make your life or your time miserable you know what i'm saying so this guard that i'm talking about right here he had a habit of extorting people i'm gonna be letting y'all know how he extorted the wrong person well let me take that back i'm gonna be letting y'all know about how he tried to extort the wrong person all right now at this time the camp that i was locked up at i won't throw the names out there because i believe this guard is possibly still you know Inside of prison, you feel me, doing this thing or whatever it may be. But this camp I was at was a ratchet institution. And what I mean by that is something happened every single day. You know, whether it was inmate on inmate, guards on inmate, inmate on guards. You know, whether it was a war, gang related, not related, whatever it is. Every single day something happened. The helicopter was very, very familiar with this institution. People were getting airlifted all the time. Okay, now, I've been to places where guards will try to extort you, you know what I'm saying? They'll try to make your time harder, and they'll try to make you come out of pocket if you want to live any, you know, better than what you can. At the end of the day, everybody has a hustle, you know? It doesn't matter if it's you or the prison guards. Guards themselves have a hustle also, and this dude, his was trying to extort. And while I was at this camp, I heard about him on the bus before we even landed at this institution. You know what I'm saying? Like his name floats around inside of prison and hops from institution to institution. You get what I'm saying? So by the time I landed at the damn, you know, front gate and was getting, you know, brought in in the bus, I already knew who he was. I already heard his name. People on the bus that been to the institution before said something about them. Or people who heard the story along the way while they were hopping from camp to camp. So me, when I, when I heard about them and everything, you know, I'm one of the people that know how to, like, pay attention very well. So if I'm sitting there on the bus and I hear two people talking about this guard, man, hey, man, he's known for extorting people. He likes to put hits on people. You know, he likes to literally, like shake people down and, 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 and not let them go to Vizzo when their family comes and try to hold their family hostage for money out there on the streets or hold the inmate hostage on the inside telling the family you got to break bread or this is going to happen. I'm talking about like some real deal slime ball shit. The type of shit that a man deserves to be airlifted over, okay? It wasn't just like he was saying, hey, look, man, you know, this is what it is, da 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 No, he was going the extra mile, you know, to literally harm people. 
literally to like try to hurt people's family members and stuff like that if you don't give him what he wants. Now, once I got off the bus and I was at this institution, you know, I peeped that there was a bunch of people that were breaking bread with him, you know, a bunch of inmates that were literally giving him stuff. And I'm talking about, you just see him. Anytime you'd see him, he was on the scene to collect. This guard wasn't even like a guard that was like in the dorm. You know, he was like security nine that worked, you know, on the inside of the compound, but walked around, you know, back and forth to keep control. And he had the keys to the fences and the gates. So that way you can, you know, have your, you know, transportations back and forth throughout the pound. Now, anytime you'd see him, you'd see him collecting. And what I mean collecting is, I don't mean honey buns and chips and soups and shit. I mean PayPal's, you know, 10 digit codes to get street money. You know, he'd come in a dorm and inmates would walk up to him individually and literally hand him a piece of paper. And that would be PayPal money that he was straight extorting people, you know. So, what ended up happening was... This officer had somebody, one of his little, you know, people that he was extorting inside of prison, get into an altercation with another inmate that I knew, you feel me? And they got into an altercation over some gambling debt or something like that. So the person I knew, shout out to G-Man, G-Man decided, you know what, I'm going to beat that dude's ass since he want to try me about my money. You know, I'm going to run up on him and I'm going to dish rag him, frog. So I said, you know, do what you got to do. I'll make sure nobody jumps in. If somebody jumps in, you know, you already know I'm going to rock with you. He says, all right, say no more. So we slide into this dude's dorm. And when we're inside the dorm, you know, G-Man goes up to him. Dude trying to talk. Like, oh, man, give me two days. Give me two days. You know, I got you. Yada, yada, yada. We just ain't been able to hit the window. They haven't called the canteen over here. They don't want to let us go out there. You know, and G-Man on some shit like, man, you had more than enough time to get me my money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I shouldn't be gambling if you can't afford to pay your debt, which is where a lot of people find themselves in situations when you're locked up. You feel me? So the dude just kept trying to like bribe G-Man, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, a couple more, a couple more, a couple more. G-Man looks over at me and I shrug my shoulders. He takes off on him. Starts painting him. Boom, 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 boom. Beating his ass inside of the bathroom area in this open bay dorm. Beats his ass good. I feel like the first hit dazed him. And then like the second and third was like made it a wrap to where like he had him balled up in the shower area. And just was greasing him. Beating his ass. You know what I'm saying? I had to turn around, make sure nobody in the dorm was going to try to jump in. So as he's whooping them you know i'm looking at all these other people i know a couple people in there that know me so i got people that are coming in there talking to me and shit vibing with me so it wasn't just like me and him you know i had people in there i knew you feel me so beats his ass beats his ass real good you feel me next thing you know instead of getting g-man his money dude decides to check in so you know how it is i mean well inmate to inmate wise if i'm making you break bread and i'm extorting you or you're paying rent or whatever it is, and your ass, you know, checks in, there goes one of my sources of income. There goes one of the ways that I get bread. That's 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 my bread and butter right there. You know, that's what happened with this prison guard. He lost a person that he was extorting due to G-Man whooping him and making him check in. You know what I'm saying? But he didn't, like, tell him, man, you know, pack your shit, check in, yada, yada, yada. Dude just was scared you feel me and the way i looked at it i mean even even after everybody got g-man you know and everybody separated everything i even told him oh it's a wrap it's a wrap you feel me that's it that's it make sure you get that money just make sure you get that money or this shit finna happen again i was telling the dude this so the ass whooping already happened you feel me so now it was like you said you'd have it in two days okay we'll get that shit in two days in all reality i feel like he wasn't going to get the money. He didn't have the money coming in two days. He was just trying to postpone it. You feel me? So in two days, he probably would have got, you know, killed or something. You feel me? So that's why he made the choice and decision on his own to check in, even after getting whooped already. You feel me? Next thing you know, the guard finds out. I guess he went down there to collect. And me and G-Man were talking about this already. We already knew, like, by bro checking in, 
first thing G-Man said was like, oh, man, now Sergeant such and such, man, finna come down here, bro, with this bullshit. And I said, why you say that? He's like, man, because he's one of his motherfucking yada, 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 and started telling me and lacing me up on a situation to where I was like, oh, okay, I understand. So I was like, damn, you made bruhs, you know, the person that breaks bread check in. And he was like, yeah, he didn't have to check in, though. Sure enough, two, three days go by. We see the guard coming. You know what I'm saying? We see him coming down the walk. You feel me? Everybody that already, you know, been talking about it already knows who he's coming there to try to, like, you know, either take the confinement or try to, you know, beat up or harm off camera or whatever it is he may do. You know, we don't really know what he's going to do yet till he gets there. Next thing you know, he comes in the dorm. Nobody wants to make eye contact with the officer. This officer specifically because a lot of people who make eye contact with him, he'll look at you and when you're walking by, he'll say, come here. And he'll stop and he'll look at you again. And it's like he could see, you know, the fear in your eyes. Not if you're scared as a man, but you just don't want to deal with him because he's the police. You know what I'm saying? He's a guard. Everybody wants to stay out of the guard's face. And he'll see that maybe you don't want to go to confinement. He can read that on you, you know. And then next thing you know, as he can sense that, it's like you're on his you know, radar now. You feel me? So a lot of people kind of like try to shift. And he knows that. He's known for that. You feel me? He's known for inmates wanting to stay out of his path. So when he comes in the dorm, everybody go to shifting all different and shit. What does he do? He walks up to G-Man. Right? Now, G-Man my dog, you feel me? So I walk over there a little bit, you know. I'm in an open bay dorm. So instead of going to the exact bunk where g-man was i went two bunks over you feel me and, and started just sitting there chilling acting like i was hanging out with this old time dude you feel me just so i can hear what he was actually trying to say to g-man you feel me now when he first walks up to the cut that g-man's sitting in there's like three other inmates around there you know what i'm saying i don't know what they were doing if they were smoking or if they were just hanging out you know just chopping it up or whatever it was but the guard says y'all take a hike you feel me and then, you know, the, the, the boys go to walking off. And he's like, hurry up, hurry up. And you feel me? Them boys clear it. So it's just G-Man. He like, you know why I'm here to see you, right? That's what he says to G-Man. And G-Man like, nah, why is that? You feel me? He's like, oh, don't play fucking dumb with me. Don't play dumb with me. You want to step on my toes? And this is what this guard's saying to an inmate, right? He's like, oh, you want to step on my toes? He's like, nah, Sarge, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, oh, inmate such and such checked in. Because uh, you want to beat him up. Apparently you put your hands on him and shit like that. But he, he worked for me. So G-Man was like, I don't know what you're talking about. So the guard gets mad and he rushes G-Man. And he like grabs him by his shirt. You know, lifts his whole shirt up. Like, you know what I'm saying? And like tells him, oh, you think I'm stupid? You think I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about? Yada, yada, yada. And he's sitting there. You know, nobody wants to fight a guard if they don't have to. So he's sitting there and he's, you know, yoked up and he's like, man, look, Sarge, yada, yada, trying to talk, you know, having patience instead of, you know, just jumping the gun and just acting out of anger. He's like, look, Sarge, I don't know what you're talking about. He says, okay. Next thing you know, he says, come on, turn around, cuff up. G-Man's like, man, for what? What I'm going to the box for? For what? For what? Cuff up for what? He, like he was refusing to cuff up. The guard said, come over here and I'm going to show you why. So next thing you know, he grabs him by his wrists, but he don't cuff him. And they start walking towards the laundry room. As they're walking towards the laundry room, he's like, man, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. That's what G-Man's saying. They get to the laundry room door. The guard turns around and gets in G-Man's face and says, what he was paying is your tab now. And he goes, what? He's like, what he was paying is your tab now. So go get my effing money. Yada, 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 yada. And started talking shit. G-Man said, man, hell no. Nah. And he was he was done with the disrespect. He's like, man, hell no, nah, man. I ain't getting you shit. You know what I'm saying? Like that. And he's like, oh, you ain't getting me nothing? And he went like he was going to grab G-Man again. G-Man wasn't having it. So this time he grabbed him. And when he grabbed him, like, you know, up under his arms... Like, man, what you got going on? Like that. And tried to push him. He pushed him into the laundry, like, doorway. 
And when he pushed him up into the laundry doorway, they go to tussling and shit like that. And then he was grabbing G-Man and hitting G-Man. When he hit G-Man in the head two times, G-Man turned around and got that boy in a headlock. I'm talking about this was in front of like 15 different inmates. He got him in a headlock like this up against the laundry door and lifted that boy up off the ground. Lifted him straight up off the ground. I'm talking about it was nothing but a headlock for like five seconds, if that. He grabbed that boy and he, the way he did it, but he, G-Man's whole face was red and was like, I ain't paying shit. He was like screaming real loud like he was hot. You know what I'm saying? He says, I ain't paying shit. I ain't fucking paying. And then when he did it, he leaned back, lifted that boy up off the ground. When he decided to let him go, because, you know, everybody's like, man, hey, man, you're tripping, you know, trying not to get him my ad charge. So when everybody runs up and he lets him go, that guard fell straight to the ground, got put to sleep, all for trying to extort G-Man. Now, my opinion, the guard shouldn't have been extorting inmates anyways. And due to the fact that, you know, I'm a convict or an ex-con, I should say. I'm going to side with the ex-cons and, and the convicts, you feel me? Because the guards are going to do the same thing. And anybody else who wants to be a correction officer or who once was or who is or who likes that side rather than the other side would, you know, agree with the officers. You feel me? That he was wrong for putting his hand on the officer, yada, 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 this and that. You feel me? But at the end of the day, if he wasn't extorting inmates, that never would have happened to him. You feel me? Now, to be weird with y'all, I thought they were going to kill G-Man after that. You feel me? Because normally when you do stuff like that, you know, they take it to the next level. You feel me? And you never see that person again. You know, they'll leave on a stretcher or something like that. They'll leave looking all drooling out the mouth like they're half, you know, cuckoo now. Like they knocked the sense out of them from beating them so much. That's how bad it be when things like this happen. You feel me? That guard, when he hit that ground... He didn't jump right back up. That boy hit the ground and then like tossed and turned and then realized where he was and jumped up. Panic, 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 hitting the panic button. Next thing you know, them boys come in squatted. The officers, deep. I'm talking about real deep. They surrounded our dorm on the outside, like the outside of the dorm and the windows and they were aiming these, these mace they were, they, were, they were mace cans. They were aiming them bitches. And then they had these things that looked like paintball guns, but they were mace balls. And they, they surrounded our whole dorm, all of our windows. You feel me? Like they were going to mace our whole dorm, which I've had happen before, by the way. But they that's what their whole go-to was over this one situation. You feel me? Now, I know people are going to feel like he should have never put his hands on the officer. But the officer should have never put his hands on him. And over the fact that an individual owed G-Man money. So G-Man did what a man would do. You feel me? Like, confront that individual or anybody's going to try to get over on you. You know what I'm saying? Anybody. If somebody sees somebody try you or owe you and you don't go collect that debt, they're going to look at you like you're sweet, like you're vulnerable. So G-Man did what he was supposed to do in my eyes, you know. But the guard, since he wanted to abuse his authority, he wanted to come down there. With his chest out. Like they always do. The dickhead ones. You know what I'm saying? And he wanted to try to use his color of his uniform and his job title to turn that other person's debt into G-Man's debt now. You feel me? And in all reality, he tried to extort the wrong one. And that's why his ass got put to sleep. You feel me? Now, when them guards ran in there. They came and squatted after they surrounded the whole thing, made everybody get on the bunk. We had to lay on our bunk face down with our hands on the back of our head, looking at our pillow. We weren't even allowed to look up. We couldn't even tell who, which officers were walking by us. You know what I'm saying? It's just, We were just face down in the pillow with our hands on the back of our head. Next thing you know, they took G-Man. You feel me? G-Man was the main one they took. He was gone and everything like that. By the time they told us we could finally look up, which they had us laying there face down, I'd say for 20 minutes. 20 minutes straight. People would turn their head to get, you know, like a breather. And the guards will run up. Cuff up, cuff up. You know, like, the fuck? Like, I can't breathe my face in the pillow like this for 20 minutes. And, you know, like, after a while, that shit, you know, we're in prison. There's no AC. You know what I'm saying? You got us laying here and shit. Like, you got us suffocating ourselves. Basically, that's what they were doing. You feel me? 
And once they finally let us, you know, get up and everything like that, we heard G-Man, he got took and, you know, they took him and stuff like that. And I'm like, damn, dog. Like, that was like a, that night felt like forever because I was just sitting there thinking like, you know, everybody's back to doing what they were doing normally. And I was just sitting there thinking like, damn, dog, they're beating the hell out of my dog right now. G-Man's getting his ass whooped right now. But one thing I do remember is before they cleared out, after they let everybody sit up on our bunk, I looked over at the officer. One of his buttons was broke on his shirt. His shit was like hanging a little bit. You could see like his skin and all that. You know what I'm saying? Tank top or whatever he was wearing. And uh, that boy had markings all right here. Like it looked like something was around his neck. It looked like someone had a belt around that bitch. And it was just from G-Man yoking him up, putting him to sleep real quick. You feel me? But at the end of the day, this is the type of things that you could find yourself in. You know, it's kind of like if you're violent or if you're, you're not soft, you're living like that. But you're not trying to be. If a motherfucker's poking you, you know, over and over and over again, it's only a matter of time, bro. You know what I'm saying? Before you fully ignite that fire, right? So, the, you know, he, he, he had patience for the most part. You feel me? And they gave him all types of write-ups, made up all types of shit. Uh, all I was saying, though, before, when, the, when the guards ran in there, I was telling G-Man, hey, put me on your uh, witness list. Put me on your wit." And he put a bunch of people on the witness list, like me and like five other people. So when they came about his DR paperwork, like a few days later, they came there to read us what the guards put in the paperwork, which was totally opposite of what really happened. He said that he went in there and he observed uh, G-Man, which I don't remember his whole name, but he, he observed G-Man doing something he shouldn't do. So he told him to stand up. And then he told the officer, what do I got to do to get you to bring some stuff in for me? Like he tried to flip it to where G-Man was trying to get the guard to legally bring contraband in. That's what he said in his paperwork. And there was like six or seven other guards that wrote the same thing. Yeah, I observed him and I heard him say, which was all bullshit because none of them guards were in the dorm. You feel me? And we had cameras inside the dorm. So the first thing we were saying is there's no cameras, there's no cameras. You know, like, like, of that is what we mean. Like, there's no cameras of, you know, him saying that. Those cameras are going to show that them guards weren't here to hear that. You know what I'm saying? But they didn't care. That's how, that's how prison works, you feel me? So he got the shit end of the stick and, you know, he was out of there, you feel me? But the whole crazy thing out of the whole situation is it felt good to see that officer with that markings around his throat just because all he literally did was try to make somebody else's bid you know miserable because that individual you know tried to collect money from another individual that the guard was already making his bid miserable you see what i'm saying and when he when he was sitting there and he and, he, and you know he had his throat he was like i'm good i'm good that's what he kept saying to the other officers you know yeah he's good but that boy did take a power nap real quick. You see what I'm saying? And through it all, this is the type of things that you see happen all the time. As far as the extortion. I'm talking about guards get away with stuff like this all the time. It isn't just prison. It happens in jails too. You know what I'm saying? And anytime a guard tries to abuse their authority and ends up getting dropped or, you know, beat up or knocked out or put to sleep or their tooth knocked out or whatever it is. They kind of deserve that in my eyes. You know what I'm saying? Because they've gotten away with so much. And they'll do it for years. Probably done already did it for years before the situation happens to them. And then they'll still do it years later because they're not going to act any different after that. Because then people are going to start talking and words going to go around that. Oh, every since such and such put your ass to sleep or every since such and such not, yeah, made you take a power and that knocked you on your ass. Every since such and such did that, you know, it, people are going to not want to change. Them guards are going to still try to do that. If not, do it more because they feel like they got that reputation to where, okay, this one got away with it, but now the next person might want to test me. And all these people want to try to test me now that I got beat up by one inmate. So they'll go extra hard trying to extort and trying to pick on and bully inmates. You get what I'm saying? And later on, when I was transferred to a whole other institution, I ran in the G-Man. 
G Man was at my camp with me, where I went, where I landed like shit. I had went to another camp and was there for like eight months, and then went to a, uh, another camp. My last camp before I EOS and came home from the streets, G Man was there, and I said, "Bro, whatever happened with the?" I said, "The police," and he told me, "No." He said, "The, the police ain't beat him." I said, "They ain't beat you." He's like, "No, nah, they didn't beat me because at the end of the day, all them guards." Respect the G-Man. You know what I'm saying? Because the officer said that he yoked G-Man up a couple times. And they seen on the camera him yoking G-Man up and trying to escort him towards the laundry room. You know, so they respected that. And they were like, it's about time somebody did that. You feel me? But we're going to railroad you on paperwork. That's what they told them. And they did. So they all lied to back the guard to get him railroad. But they did not beat his ass. You see what I'm saying? So he got spared on that end. But through it all, he gets to remember, you know, how he put a guard to sleep. You feel me? For trying to extort him. The guard tried to extort the wrong person. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, you fought with the bull, you get the horns. You keep poking and poking and poking something. It's only a matter of time before that shit strikes. You see? And like I always tell y'all. When I do these videos and I tell you this stuff, the things that I be talking about happen like clockwork inside a prison. It isn't like, oh, this happened once and then it won't happen again for six months. No, the things that I be talking about happen frequently. Daily routines. You know what I'm saying? You get guards like this everywhere you go. Just like you get some guards that are also straight. You feel me? That's why I say... Not everybody's fuckboys, you know what I'm saying? There is some cool ones. There's ones that let you bend the law, let you, you know, do what you need to do. And they don't care. It's just a paycheck for them. You know what I'm saying? And there's ones that are straight arrowed, you know, the ones that are like, yes, walk on the wrong side of the line. Book them, Dan, or you're going to confinement. You know what I'm saying? You got your shirt untucked on one side. Book them, Dan, or you're going to confinement. Like, that's, they live by, you know, the book, which... When you see them type, you know how to play them. You know to just be on your, you know, be on point. Be on, you know what I'm saying? Just do what you're supposed to do and they'll, they'll stay out of your hairs. But it's the ones that abuse it. It's the ones that are crooked. You know what I'm saying? Not in a good way. The ones that are flaw. You know what I'm saying? That are the problem. In all reality, <laughs> shout out to G-Man. You hear me? You know, that boy did what he needed to do. He held his own. You know what I'm saying? The only bad thing other than getting transferred and the railroad and paperwork, you know, he got time and confinement and all that shit, is when he got transferred from one place to another. You know, they, they, they handled him like with a precaution. You know, he thought he was going to get his ass whooped every single time because word travels. And normally when they find out you hit a guard, as soon as you go somewhere else, those guards are going to beat you for it. They're going to try you. Because you hit another guard. Even if it's a guard, they don't know. That's just how it goes. They do shit like that. You know what I'm saying? They stick together. You feel me? And you got to be ready for that. You know, once they see you hit officers, oh, you like to hit officers, right? And they'll, they'll try to beat your ass and lie and give you more paperwork and railroad you some more. You see what I'm saying? That's how it goes. But anyways, that's all I got for y'all on this one here, man. I felt like sharing a story with y'all. No, I ain't posted in a couple days. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I had some things I needed to take care of. But anyways, y'all let me know, man. Drop it in the comment section if you've ever seen an officer trying to extort somebody, an inmate. You know what I'm saying? Inmates extorting inmates is common, right? It's, it's something that you should, you know, prepare yourself for. Something that you would know to look out for, even if you haven't been locked up before. Now, as far as the guards trying to extort you, that's something. That's a whole other ball game. That's something that could have you feeling like, damn, not only am I outnumbered by the inmates, but now I got the officers at my throat too. You feel me? They try to corner you in. You know, you, you, you're not cool with them inmates, so you, you're, you're, you're a loner. You singled yourself out, you know, because you ain't trying to get in no shit. And then the guards peep that, and then here they come on the other end, the ones that are supposed to protect and serve, and instead... They're there too, like, oh, well, you know what time it is over here. Time to break bread. You see what I'm saying? You got to look out for that type of shit. But y'all let me know, man. Y'all think G-Man was wrong? Because I don't think he is. You feel me? 
But anyways, man, y'all already know, man. Drop in the comment section. Let me know how y'all feel about the situation. Let me know what you would have did in this type of situation. Would you have handled up like G-Man did? Would you have gave the officer a couple more little, you know, passes before you decided to yoke him up? Or would you just, you know, bow down and broke bread and made the other dude's debt now your debt? You feel me? That's what the comment section's for, man. But anyways, man, I appreciate y'all watching. Like I always say, make sure you keep them rats, squares, clowns, chomos, pedos, gunners, wannabe island boys, and clout chasers out your circle. And them flaw-ass, crooked-ass, extorting-ass officers. Till next time, this the one and only. I am my team, Frog. I'm a criminal. I'm a cool nigga, but I got a limit, though. I'm a cool nigga, but I got a limit, though. Cause I'm a criminal. Yeah, I'm a criminal.